tonight on Police 107. We're out with Constables Glenn Wilson and Aaron Kelleher in the Bay of Plenty. When they come across a driver who just doesn't know when to stop. What do you reckon? Well, I reckon if you hadn't, if you hadn't been so stupid and done it right in front of us, you would have been sweet, you would have been copping another ticket. What did I do? Constable Keith Mitchell and his dog Zorba are on the trail of some drunks in Hamilton. Hey, well, it's my mom. Man, I'm allowed to piss on the fence, man. A party with 500 teenagers threatens to get out of control. A fight breaks out on the main street. And a teenager tries to outrun the police. I went 10-7 at the uh, scene. Constable Keith Mitchell's responding to a report about two men who have destroyed a bus shelter. Where's the uh, bus stop? Yeah, 1-4, 14 Alpha. Oh, no. Yeah, we've got 14, but there's no 14 Alpha. <clears throat> Did you see where they went? Yeah, well, they went that way. They must have gone left up into the park, probably. Can help? A witness at the scene points Keith in the right direction, but it's going to be up to his dog Zorba to track the offenders down. It only takes Zorba a few moments to locate a scent. The result of a track like this can be important evidence in linking a suspect to a crime. But it's a difficult job for Zorba to keep focus when there's people everywhere. Where have you come from? From my house. Huh? From my house. Where, whereabouts is that? Zorba finally pulls Keith into the darkness of a local park, and it's there that they track the first suspect down. Oh, good boy! Good boy! Hey, what's he talking about? You're smashing up the You take it down, man. man. You tell me what you've done. Yes, oh. mate! You tell me what you've done. The suspect was sleeping under a tree and he's finding it very hard to wake up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Make him make because I'm fucking so stoned. Stand up. We know what you've done. The dog's tracked straight here to you. The second man is nowhere to be seen, and the one they've caught is in no state to tell the police much. With one offender on his way back to Central, Keith sets off in search of the other one. And when a guy pops out of the bushes, it seems he's got his man. Just pop your foot up, mate. I can get the springs checked by a referee. Come on. Right up. But there's no sign of any glass in his boots, and the man says he's just going home. The thing is, we've been looking for these two guys all through the lake and the surrounding areas. As soon as all the police cars leave, you pop up. Another witness arrives, but she doesn't think Keith's got the right man. And it's not going to just say, no, that's no, fine. OK, thanks for your help. OK, sorry to see you again. Good news or the bad news? Good news is it's not you. Oh, phew. The bad news is you've got to walk home because I've got my trusty friend with me and I have to take him. Thanks for your time, eh? Appreciate it.
With a man on his way home, Keith's next call is to a house where there's been a report of a prowler. We called to a prowler job in one of the worst parts of town. The house owner's dog's been repeatedly disturbed during the night. Keith quickly spots somebody in a red T-shirt. And there's someone matching the description through there. Straight ahead with the red T-shirt on. It turns out that the neighbours have been using the complainant's fence as a urinal. Hey, well, it's not like, man, I'm allowed to piss on the fence, man. Yeah, but the, what, what happens when it's getting used? I was in the toilet, bro. Of course. Hey, but it's on outside. Jesus, Jesus. You should have pissed on the house. Sorry, dog. You've got a toilet in the house. Use it. Sweet ass, boss. Sorry about that. So it's all right if I piss on the letterbox. Yeah. If you piss on the letterbox, I'll lock you up. I can't eat. That is great, sure, boss. Sure. Keith's barely back in the car when a call comes through about a car pursuit in a nearby suburb. Drivers failed to stop when asked by police, and the car is now moving at more than 100 kilometres an hour, and it's weaving from side to side. As Keith comes round a corner, the car mounts the footpath, goes straight through a power pole, and ends up in somebody's garden. The teenagers in the car have been very lucky, but that doesn't make them any more cooperative, and it's some time before police get them under control. The car's badly damaged, and the driver's saying nothing. What's your name? Yeah, whose car's it? Why did you run it? Why? I'm not seeing anything. Why are you driving like that when it's your car? Have you got a car and driver's license, boy? Yes. Robert was convicted of dangerous driving, fined $500, and disqualified from driving for six months. At Martangi, just outside of Hamilton, Constable Keith Mitchell has a problem. A party in the local hall is threatening to get out of control and there aren't enough officers to deal with it. As you can see with the numbers of cars and people here, it may not be prudent to close it down, uh, because we haven't got a hell of a lot of staff numbers, and if it turns ugly, then we're probably on the back foot. Probably, um, sure, 10 three things. So someone will make a decision to maybe leave it running. It only takes one or two to start throwing bottles and you're in, uh, in trouble. Bottles do start to break, and police have no choice but to try and close the party down, as quietly as possible. After an hour of gentle prodding, the crowd begins to leave, and Keith Mitchell and his dog Zorba can return to town. But just outside the police dog base, a car speeds past at more than 150 kilometres an hour. After a brief chase, Keith gets the car to pull over, and the driver's obviously been drinking. Get out of the car. Another driver, Warren, has nearly been run off the road by James, and he's a potential witness in any prosecution. Okay, I need to get his bridge on that when he comes straight for me and that's when he comes 
you tell me you're not drunk or what? The arrival of another patrol car means that James is going to get a chance to prove he's not been drinking. And although he believes he's sober enough to drive, the breath test is about to show he's wrong. A couple of beers. A couple of beers. See if we have any risen, you know. Spur some up. Who's is that? Doesn't say. Well, well, general test. Why is it coming into the Hamilton Central Police Station? Back at the station, James would eventually register at more than twice the legal limit in an evidential breath test. Oi! Come here, you. And in town, a group of people have been fighting and arguing their way up the main street. Before Keith arrived, the group had already been moved on twice by the police. And the arguments are becoming more and more violent. With things getting out of hand, police move in to deal with the situation. Back at the station, Jason, the man Keith's arrested, is claiming he was trying to save his younger brother. Okay. So he's been a bit of a tonight. That's we right. Got, we, we got yeah, quite a lot, actually. He was just here to take him home. That, that car that was just parked up the road. Yep. I was trying to get into that car. You know, I'm sick of this shit. My little brother's having domestics with his missus. She's backstabbing my missus. And I just, like, you know, these. You know, and then that male chick come up and nutted out of me. You must have seen that because she was. Is that the girl on the red top? Yeah, she nutted yep. out of me, and all I was trying to do was get my brother in the f***ing car. Well, you should have ignored them in the first place and gone home when you were told, right? Huh? Yeah. So if you don't do that, this is where you end up. No. I'll give you a, uh, an option that you don't have to go to court. If he accepts the option, the Sorry. fine in the mail will amount to $150. Saturday night in Hamilton isn't the best time to be a police officer. There's do, drunks, man? fights, and people that just don't know how to behave. Clean it up. Clean it up. You made the mess, you should clean it up, don't you think? Constable Willie Squires has caught Dave urinating into a doorway up against a shop window. Use your head, mate. Use my head? Yep. Not at, literally. Just use your head and think, what's a good way of cleaning that up, man? Have you got a hose on you? No. Dave's well, failure to come up with a way to clean up the mess can only mean a trip back to Central. That's another idea, man. What have you got on you that you could use to clean it up? Nothing, eh? Nothing. All right. You're under arrest, all right? What is that? For offensive behaviour. Come with me. Well, hold on, hold on. No, no. Because you're under arrest, you've got the right to refrain from making a statement. You've got the right to consult and instruct a lawyer in private without delay. Put your hands behind your back. Given these opportunities as soon as practicable, okay. You're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say, it may be given in evidence. Do you understand your rights? Do you understand your rights? No. I'll explain them to you as we get down the station, you know. Hey, jump in. Well, I'll my up. No, no, you can jump in the car. Hey, suss me up. Jump in the car. Just sit there. At the station, Dave gets the option of signing up for a small fine. It's one way of reducing court congestion. Because what you've done, okay, is a pretty minor offence, okay, you get the opportunity not to go to court for it, okay, and you can sign a guilty letter, okay, and what normally happens is they post you out a small fine in the mail, you get that opportunity if you wish. With Dave on his way back home, Willie Squires finds himself in the middle of a car chase that ends hard up against a traffic pole. Where is it? Here we go. Bingo. Go, Bella. What is it? What is it? The car was reported as stolen and then failed to stop and police tried to pull it over. The chase didn't stop until Willie used his police car to block in the crash Subaru to prevent it from reversing off the pole. 
The driver pleaded guilty to all nine charges laid against him. While police are cleaning up the scene, a call comes in from Constable Kylie Crowley. She's been trying to deal with a drunk who's been causing trouble, and one of his friends, Peter, has tried to intervene. Can I talk to this officer here, please? No, you can't. You can uh, talk sir, to me. Can I well, talk this is what you should have done, and your mate should have stayed out of it, all right? Can I talk to you? No. Oh, can I talk to you, then? No. Um, oh, well, we'll take one if you want. Yeah, you can take... To use, you're under arrest. No one likes to say anything. And anything you do say, so to get in the middle Don't start fighting, Police pal. Don't start fighting. She's hurting me. Come with me. She's hurting me. Come with me. Hey, I'm on TV! Yeah! You Jump in. You can't arrest me because I've got to take yep. my mates home. It's because... too late, mate. You're already under arrest. Jump in the car. Oh. Jump in the car. Can I talk to you before? Look. Hey? Well, can my girlfriend come with her? No. Jump in the car. Well, then what's she going to do? I don't know, man. Just mind your language, man, while you're in here. Oh. Events have obviously happened too quickly for Peter. But Kylie Crowley's in no doubt that he needs to be dealt with. Sorry. Isn't this guy's here for disorderly? Yep, OK, look it. All right, look it. But Peter's still not convinced. Yep. All I was doing was, yep. like, telling them to let my mate up so that he okay. could get off the ground and they arrested yep. me. OK, yep. Yep. You can't do that, eh? If the police are doing a job, OK, you can't try and interrupt. Or no, but I was just away. telling them, you know, to yeah, let them up. You can't. Was saying, let me up. And I yeah. said, oh, look. Well, you, you can't, mate, you've got to let them do their job. You can't interfere, right? So that's what I'm doing. Okay? It's just a minor thing at this stage, yeah, mate, OK? So um, what we'll do is we'll get you down the station, we'll, we'll get it sorted. You'll be bailed, You'll be bailed yep. Tonight. Yep. So long as you're not too pissed and you don't play up, all right? No, I won't. All right, yep. Be... You'll be like you are now, and you'll be out of there as soon as, all right? Okay, yep, good. you'll be out there quick as, all right? There you go. Constables Glenn Wilson and Aaron Kelleher are on patrol in the Bay of Plenty when their attention is drawn to a driver who's not wearing a seatbelt. But what starts as a routine a stop a will soon in. escalate into a major fine. Hello, mate. What's you... this? What's this? Just a stop, mate. You didn't have your seatbelt on. You got your license on you, buddy? No, I haven't. You haven't? I've uh, probably left it at work, actually. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going back to work. Just had a bit of a crisis at home, so I had to shoot up to the school to get my daughter. What's your surname, mate? To make matters worse, oh, mate. a quick check of the car reveals a balding tyre. Oh, come on, G, come on. What's this stop? <laughs> What's your first name, buddy? We're going to give you oh, 14 days, you? mate. 14 days? Yep. What are we going to do? Belt, mate. Get another tyre. Seatbelt. Seatbelt. Yeah, yeah. You get a warning. You get, a, you get 14 days to get your tyre sorted out, but we have to give you a ticket for your seatbelt, OK, mate? you got to try a seatbelt on, eh? Okay. We're pretty hot on that. Fair enough. What was the rules there, mate? Stan, the driver, appears to be taking it all pretty well until he discovers the size of the fine. If you get the... Um, 14-day compliance. To get your, get your tyre sorted out in the next two weeks, you don't have to pay that one, but you've got to take the ticket in there. Yeah, 150 for new belt. Yeah, true. Oh, get your tyre sorted out, take, this into the, take the ticket and the car into the local police station, and they'll give you compliance, okay, as long as you do that in the next two weeks. Get the sunny of buddy. I'll go and talk to the lady, see if she's got 150 bucks to pay for my, my <laughs> camera for you. Your, your, your appearance money, you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> With little chance of an appearance fee, the gathering breaks up. What'd you do that? Take it. But just as Glenn and Aaron are leaving, Stan decides to do a burn up on the state highway. <laughs> oh, Glenn. Oh. But this time stands in for an even bigger shock. The fine for driving in a manner likely to cause annoyance is $600. Watch out, mate. He's getting uh, wrong on a manner. Oh, dear. Go on, leave. You can't drive all that way. Come on. Man's got to go back to work. Man yeah. doesn't do a burnout like that. Oh, that's not a burnout, though. Yeah, that's you can't do this on the state highway, mate, right in front of us. Not very smart. So can I go and do a wheelie on my own uh, driveway? If you do, do it, it, you want, I'll, I'll, I'll go and show you what a burnout looks like, eh? Come back with me. If all, the, if all the stones are hitting the road, mate, you'll get another one. Oh, well, I'll just do it from the 
You're halfway back, down the driveway, yeah. No, 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 just back it out and come onto the road. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay then, fella's gonna arrest me, you wanna come watch me? Oh, oh man. Come on now. I burn it. I gotta pay for this ticket here too, so you know. This one's probably a little bit more expensive than your last one. Uh, oh, he's a hard man, all right, you know? Oh, just not clever, eh? Doing it right oh, in front no, of us. Oh, you know, you probably should be able to catch a real crooks, man. What do you reckon? Well, I reckon if you, had, if you hadn't been so stupid and done it right in front of us, you'd have been sweet, you would have been copping another ticket. What did I do? What did I do? Doing a burnout right in front of us. Oh, I mean, that's no, not I'll exactly smart. Burnout us. Come back to my place, I'll share with a burnout us. Stan still doesn't get it. So far, he's cost himself $750, and all he can come up with is an invitation to a real burnout. Let's so pull your head in. You're just not making any friends here. Oh, and what's a couple of stones on the road? Come on. Six. Come on, you fellas. It's just being girls, really. <clears throat> Got to set an example, mate. That's not the sort of example. Driving around with. Piss on. That's right. That'll be. That'll be it. <laughs> Did you get that? You watch, we'll be taking the skis off me. Just watch him, mate. Let's take it go straight out window. Oh, At this point, most people would just drive away. But not Stan. He decides to follow the police car. Yeah, they start off just with something really minor, and quite often they wouldn't even get a ticket if they didn't make such an idiot of themselves. A lot of it's about attitude, and these guys like him, their attitude starts off bad and gets worse. Eventually, Aaron pulls over and Stan drives off into the distance. Oh, he's got a seatbelt on too. So he's learned a lesson there. Next week on Police 107, we're out on the road with officers from Mount Monganui. They have to deal with runaways, burglars and drug dealers, as well as a boy racer who shouldn't have been drinking and driving. Well, I was still backing out three days, he was still down there. Next minute, boom, straight in.